Um, cut back on phone use, correct? Uh, that means there are mobile phones. That means uh, looking up on YouTube on the phones, uh, making calls, doing research, reading articles, anything that has to do with these electronics. Is that correct? Or only or primarily when they're wireless, like a, a smartphone or whatever. Uh, is that what you're saying? OK, good question. Um, you know what, and I've got something that I didn't um, I didn't include, but let me explain now. And then, um, so definitely on wireless stuff. If you're, but let me, let me, all right, let me, let me answer your question. Let me try my best, and then you tell me if I've answered your question or not. It takes more energy. So if you send 100 manuscripts that are each, 100 pages long, like, you know, typed print, that is less energy than um, a photo. If you, so a text, ener text takes less energy than voicemail. Voicemail takes less energy than a photo. A photo takes less energy than a video. You know Blu-ray video? That is much more dense, right? Like the data, the, there are tons more pixels in there, so that's going to be more energy than, like the high definition stuff takes more energy than a, what's the less, the rung before Blu-ray or high definition. But you understand what I'm saying. Um, so Skyping, uses more energy than plain talk. Right. So okay. So if you, if you, um, and the, you know, I'm a grandparent and I have, um, <laughs> and so I know about what happens if you don't have FaceTime with people who don't live in the same house with you. Um, so people have become, you know, they say, well, there's a lot of benefit from FaceTime with grandchildren, but you see how it's consuming more energy if you have, if you Skype, than if you just do talking. Now, but let me also say, so supposedly I have a corded, I know I have a corded telephone, and it doesn't require any extra electricity to operate. Like, I don't have to plug in extra electricity. And supposedly it's a landline. But I don't really know for sure. I think it's probably powered by a bunch of satellites. And there's, you know, there's, every system now is, we're, we're not on pure Copper Legacy landline anymore. I don't know any, maybe there are some places, but I really have my doubts. So I, I don't know what's, um, there, there's a lot of I don't knows there. And the stuff is changing all the time. But hopefully that list that I gave you, uh, that the more data involved, the more energy you're going to consume. And upgrading really takes all the embodied energy that it takes to manufacture the new thing that you're buying. So you want to focus on not upgrading. To make it easy access, we could say uh, <coughs> simplify and minimize, unnecess minimize use and simplify use of electronics, especially wireless. So I would say, Across yeah. the board. And another way that one of the people I talk with regularly said to me was, you want to figure out what is essential and use much less of everything else. Mm -hmm. and, and, we, and so try a little bit. Start with 3% a month. Well, whatever. Just cut it back as much as you can. Okay. Uh, I think that, that makes it easy access for everyone. The other thing is I have automatic upgrades that happen on my computer. I'll be working, and all of a sudden, boom, and it starts upgrading. I didn't even ask for it. Right. I don't even know how to stop that. We are all at the mercy of forces beyond our control. Yeah, well, and you said link or embed rather than post. What were you talking rather about Rather than there? repost. 
What does that so mean? So like if you, do you have a website? No. If you have a website and you really like hearing Katie Singer speak today and you say, watch this video, if you, if you get a copy of the video and you put it on your website, then the data center is going to store it, even though Real Truth Talks is already storing it. So you would instead just link to Real Truth Talks copy of this video. So then it's only stored once. So to simplify it, rather than storing an entire item, in storing just it send multiple a link times, instead. just but send there, a link. You, you, instead of storing it multiple times, you only we are only storing it once. But there's a problem with that, which is that if you have a video that you really, really like, that's giving you information, um, you know, it could be from the New York Times, it it, it may disappear. Right. Let me, let's go to other uh, questions. Well, Thank you. One last question, please. <laughs> okay, you go know, ahead. I, I like to watch these YouTube talks and then save them on my uh, desktop. Exactly. So it's, then that means you are reposting them and they that's are being. That's what I wanted to yeah, know. That, and that means, so when you save them on your Thank own you. desktop, then they're being restored, but they're, they're being stored again at the data center, which is using more energy. Yeah. Thank you. The comment you made about uh, you know trying to save three percent of your energy, um, we would save the three percent, and I wouldn't say a great pain to ourselves, but while we're saving that three percent, the the bigger entities are just using the three percent that we're saving because you said we're going to have an unlimited supply, and you didn't mention um, NSA as you know one of the major energy Absolutely. gobblers, and uh, what is your feeling about letting our legislators know that we don't want them collecting all that data. And it, and the, I don't know how I would phrase it to them, but it, maybe you can tell us. Thank you. Um, Are you answering her? Yeah, I'm going to try to answer. So there's certainly controversy, and I'm going to go around the block. <laughs> there's certainly controversy about climate change. And I'm not, it, it doesn't serve me to have arguments about whether it's caused by human behavior or not. I, I, as far as I can tell, we're in agreement that about energy consumption, that we have limited energy supplies. And I don't know if I made clear that, like all of this, you know, when I was describing the process for manufacturing silicon wafers, um, that takes a profound amount of energy, but we're not told that. Everyone said, you know, get renewables, and uh, you, can, you can have a green life, and you can have a jacuzzi sauna, and you can have all these devices Thanks. and not feel guilty about your energy consumption. And that would not be true after you learn what goes into manufacturing silicon wafers. And I didn't talk about what goes into manufacturing wind turbines, but it's also a pretty grisly process. So we're in agreement that as a nation, we have to limit our energy consumption. And according to teams of scientists, we do need to curtail our greenhouse gas emissions. So that's an assignment to look at. And yes, all of this data that's being collected by smart meters, like they will blast, what is it, 10,000 times in a day. Each of those transmissions is sending data about one household that has to be stored somewhere. That's energy. Do we really have it? So as a nation, we also need to make, to, to clarify what's essential. I'll say I haven't really thought your question through. I think it's an excellent question, and we absolutely need to be looking at it. And I'm just sharing, 
you know, it's coming to me right now as a beginning frame for looking at it. And I do believe that there are people in Congress and our neighborhoods, you know, and our families who are like, okay, let's, let's look at these questions. My prayer is that this stuff that has come to me, when a lot of times when I read that opening statement, you know, about the global super factory, people get enlightened. <laughs> um, it's kind of a wake up. Um, and everyone will say, whoa, I never thought of that before. But then, like, then the, the light bulbs, <laughs> for lack of a better word, they do go off. And once you're aware of it, you know, you're, you're on and you start asking questions like you're asking. So please keep, keep it going. Yeah. Any other questions? Where's the, oh, here's the microphone. Okay. Um, I know that your focus was more on energy, but do you have any expertise on the various products that they sell for uh, protecting yourself from the radiation from the devices? And how to protect yourself from radiation from yeah, devices? Yeah, how do you know what's true or not? I've heard those things you stick on your phone or whatever don't really do anything. Hun, can you talk, talk a little, but yes, yeah, say it again. Yeah, like do any of those devices work? There's those clothes, there's the little things you stick on your phone or your router. How do we make sense of that? Okay. Um, so I'll repeat the question that how, how, do, how do we protect ourselves from the radiation emitted by devices? I say I have no gizmo to endorse. And I, I believe in unplugging. So the first order would be to turn your Wi-Fi off at night for at least 12 hours. Um, so I'm in this hotel, and behind the bed, there are a bunch of, you know what, wall, you know, the wall warts, the, um, the little black boxes at the end of a cord. Those are switch mode power supplies. Um, they're, <laughs> you know, there's nothing wireless to them, but um, there were about three of them plugged into the headboard of the bed I'm sleeping in in this hotel. I unplugged them before I went to sleep. What a concept. Um, and so, um, so I believe in unplugging. And certainly, again, turning your Wi-Fi off at night for at least 12 hours. Um, if you can find, and, and in terms of device, you know, like shielding, so the Environmental Working Group did a study, I think about, four or five years ago of the shields for smartphones and cell phones, and they found that the shields can increase your exposure by as much as 60%. So, and I, I know people who spent, they had a lot of money, this, this one guy had a lot of money, and he spent $20,000 on two, $10,000 on two occasions building a wall to shield himself from radiation that was coming from an antenna that he could see. He was unaware of antennas on the other side of the wall. The radiation from those antennas ricocheted from the other side of the wall he built into his house, increasing his exposure. He's a very smart dude. But you ha you, there's so much going on. So in terms of shielding yourself, you have to monitor it constantly. You have to really know how to use the meters, and you absolutely cannot use any kind of wireless devices inside the shielding because they will ricochet. That's why you don't want to use in a car. But then, how do you deal with a car? You, well, you buy an older car to begin with. Forget these newer. Cars. What about GPS in huh? the car? I mean, we all rely on the GPS in the car. Um, so okay, I, and, and there is no question that using an older used car, an older car, 
you're going to be consuming much less energy than buying a new car. Even if, you're, if, if the older car uses more gasoline because of all the embodied energy in a new car. You follow what I'm saying? Then any new product uses, there, there is so much, there's like at least 90% of the energy consumed by a car, a phone, any of it, is, it's so much greater in the manufacturing of that item than in the amount of energy it will use in its usable lifespan. So we've been taught to think about, um, you know, recycle days and rah-rah recycling and recycle all your electronics, but the waste at the end of a life cycle is a smidgen, literally. So I'm going to say again, try reducing your consumption by 3% per month to reduce your radiation exposure. And that's interesting to see how that dovetails, reducing your radiation exposure and reducing your energy consumption. Just try 3% a month. OK. I, I understand what you're saying, but you, at some point you kind of feel like, like with recycling, I feel like I recycle while my neighbors don't recycle. There's people here who couldn't turn their phone off during the entire speech. And I'm going to go and go out of my way to limit my usage. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your talk. It's really wonderful and eye-opening. Uh, I knew a lot, and I'm doing a lot already. My car is 14 years old. <laughs> my clothes are old. I'm old myself. I recycle my um, my first food thing for lunch. Um, I, but I did fly over here from Europe for this conference. Um, and I'm also looking into um, solar energy because um, I think it's a good new thing to do. Um, I've, I've turned our energy usage in half just by simply switching off um, the heating and things like that. Um, not having the television run and things like that, it significantly reduced, you could save money even without switching an energy provider or anything. Um, so it's little simple things that everybody can do. Um, but what is the deal with the solar? That's what I'm especially interested in. So the book that will be out in, in April, Our Web of Inconvenient Truths, I've got a lot more about solar there. Um, there are multiple problems for me with solar. Um, one of them, so the panels collect direct current. And then in order to generate alternating current, it goes through an inverter, which has to be manufactured, right? And then whenever you switch from DC to AC, which is pretty much all the time, whenever you've got an electronic device, that generates, um, it, that, that chops the current, the 60 hertz cycle or the 50 hertz cycle in Europe. And that is, like engineers would call that noise on the wires. So if you're a recording artist, you don't want that noise on the wires because it'll interfere with the recording of the music. Some people also have looked at how that impacts health, how that noise radiates from the wires behind the walls into the room. So it's a health problem. In Germany, there are inverters that are supposedly cleaner and that filter this noise. Those filters also take manufacturing and they, and they reduce the energy efficiency of the solar system. I'm noticing that for many people, when they get a solar system, they think, okay, that justifies me having a jacuzzi or um, you know, a new refrigerator or an extra smartphone or a stereo system or whatever. Um, 
And so that's not helpful to the overall situation that we're in. Most in this country, I think at least 90% of solar systems are installed without a battery. So people stay dependent on the utility. And um, there are problems with that, and there are problems with having a battery, because the batteries have to be manufactured, and that's usually a very toxic process from beginning to end of life cycle. So I'm not saying no. <laughs> I'm just saying be aware of all of these things. I can also say um, I live in New Mexico. We have a lot of sun there. And I've had a solar oven for 10 years. You, you know what those are? It's a black box at a 45 degree angle, um, you know, just a clear plastic top. And I just put it in the sun and I cook food. There's no electricity involved. It's a, just a, a black box with a clear plastic top. And I love it. It makes really good food. But even though I live in New Mexico, I find, okay, I only get usable sun from like 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in July. And then we have get the monsoon season, and so it's really cloudy. And so forget it. I can't use it in August. And so I'm just noticing that, it, so in New York, you guys have cloud cover a lot of the time. How much usable sun can you realistically get? We're not going to get enough to power industry from renewables. Uh, no, I, th I think I agree, but we have a place in South Africa and our heavy electric gates, they are powered by just little solar boxes. There is no way of getting a cable there. And it's been working for 14, 15 years. Um, it does work. And I'm from Germany, which is the leading nation in solar power, believe it or not, and it's very cold there. <laughs> I was just there. Um, yeah, it somehow, I don't know, it's, it's Wonderful what you do, and I, I agree with actually everything you say. Well, just keep your questions going. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Who, who else here has a question over on this? Thank you. Uh, this is more of a, a comment than a question. And uh, it's rather politically incorrect, but the bottom line is that the world has to watch population growth. Because if there are fewer people, there are fewer people creating pollution, fewer pe people needing energy. Um, and I speak from the fact that I'm an only child. I've been married and divorced. I never had children. And I try to keep my footprint on this, on this earth very, very small. Um, and again, that's my comment. Can I respond? Um, so the, th the oh, okay, so there are two things, and this is, this is hard, what I'm gonna say. Um, and I also have, biologically, I ha I've had no children. Um, and the fact is, there are almost, you know, there's more than seven and a half billion of us here now. So we can't change that. Um, we're here. And I, um, I'm just going to go back to what Bill Torbert said, which is, if we're not aware that we are part of the problem, we can't be part of the solution. So I hear you that you are doing what you can to keep your footprint small. And the more you can be aware of your part of the problem, the more we can learn from you. But if you tell me what to do, that's gonna push me away. And so, so even though you have as, not even though, 
as you have much to teach us, we need you to listen to us. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make one other comment. Um, the, I mean, we have to be realistic about this. Yes. And again, I don't, I don't preach. I don't tell my friends that have more than two children what to do. But the world is at a tipping point, and we have to be realistic about this. You know, and what again, do you I, propose? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, That's a good place to start. Education. But the world is at a tipping point, and uh, I believe that we're at this point juncture, especially with the politics going on in, in our own country, we're at a, at a juncture that is almost uh, irreversible. I have a friend who says, um, she said last week, you know, I, I said, how are you? And she said, I don't really have enough energy for today. And, she, and then she, you know, and I was like, I can totally relate to that. And then she said, I'm bargaining with reality. And I thought that was an incredible description of the whole world. We don't really have enough energy for what we're doing, and we are all bargaining with reality. As a society, we're bargaining with reality. So as we become more aware of our own world, our own lives, and our own contribution to this extraordinary mess, the, the more real we can be about that contribution, then we'll see what, what emerges. I think there was one more question. Yes. Thank you. I have a router in the house, but that's downstairs, and I sleep upstairs. So is that really going up there, or how far does it go? <laughs> Um, so the question is, how far does the router travel if the router is downstairs and you're sleeping upstairs? Um, we don't know. You would need meters to, te to find out. And, um, and you would need a bunch of different kinds of meters to find out. So I'm going to say again, f get some 23-year-old to help you get a way to turn it off easily and then turn it back on easily. A fr um, I stayed in a friend's house the other night and she turned her Wi-Fi off because I was there. And then the next morning, she didn't have her passwords for turning her system back on and she needed yet another password for getting her printer back on. It was really quite a fiasco. And we were just giggling the whole time. So, yes. You need 23-year-olds to help you. Thank you all so very much. Steve. <laughs>